Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at how you can build a good hovercraft in Robocraft. Now the one I'm going to build is a tier 1 vehicle, which means that you're going to be using parts which are not that high of a tier, so you should be able to unlock these pretty soon. I'm using the Hoverblade T2. These things don't have a very high speed, don't have a very high robot ranking, and their armor is somewhat lacking. But you can actually use these to make a good hovercraft. Now keep in mind that when using a hovercraft you want to build this thing as light as possible because it has to hover. It would be a mistake to build these things with heavy chassis cubes because these things are three times as heavy as the light chassis cubes. So what I'm going to start doing is making a frame of light robot craft cubes. I'm leaving this frame open in the middle. This is intentional because the less blocks you use, the lighter the vehicle actually is. This is going to be the frame of my robot. First I'm going to put in the required components, which is a pilot seat. And in my case I always like to bring an enemy radar because it will show you where the enemy is, even on the minimap. So this is going to be the frame of the craft. Now, building a hovercraft is not an exact science. It's something you have to practice. So you're going to be doing a lot of practice modes and a lot of training battles to see if the thing will actually fly, not flip over, and how well it can control if it does flip over. What I'm going to start doing is building an armored front of this ship. I'm using the armored cubes T1 for this because the Robocraft hover blades, the T2s, are already putting quite a strain on my tier limit and I want to keep it tier 1. I'm going to build a slight armored frame on the front side because even though we're a hovercraft the front is probably going to be taking the most fire. Next I'm going to build up, sorry, take the T1 cube again, top two layers and the bottom two. And to do this I'm going to put on a wheel to actually lift up the robot. Now I can build under it. This way I can build two more armored cubes below it. Now I want to put some guns on this thing so I'm going to first select the guns I want to use which is the front mount SMG T1. I want to keep this thing as cheap as possible. Remove the wheel Add some SMGs, but with the hovercraft you need to be very careful how you position these SMGs. See at the current circle, you can see that this gun is going to angle up 90 degrees and angle down about 45. If I'm flying, it has absolutely no sense to fly this thing so that the targets are upwards. So I'm going to use the scroll wheel to rotate these guns downwards. This way the gun can point down 90 degrees and up 45, which means I can still target aerial vehicles if I'm flying on the ground. And if I'm in the air it's much easier to target the vehicles which are on the ground. So I put a couple of guns on this thing. On the bottom side it's in reverse, because now you want to be able to have these guns aim up, because you want to be able to target flying vehicles, and aim them down just a little bit in case you're in the air. Now I can add some of the hover blades. I add two more hover blades on the front. And now in the middle I have room for some other SMGs. How you position these is up to you. You can even build this frame out a little more so you have a little more space in the middle. But I'm going with one SMG in the middle and I'm going to again reverse this thing so it points down. Now this thing is not very heavily armored and that's the main problem with hovercrafts. The moment they get shot at and you lose one of the hover blades it's going to be very difficult to control these things. So make sure that you have either redundant rotor blades or that you don't get hit. Okay, I want to see if this thing flips over and I think it will because my front is a little heavy. So I'm not going to take this thing into battle right away, I'm going into practice mode and you can press P on the keyboard to do this. Now the controls of a hovercraft are a little bit difficult or a little different from what you're used to in a car because a car cannot turn in its place and as you can see even without me controlling the hovercraft it's already doing that. So if I use A and D key I can turn in my place, turn literally on a dime. 
Space raises the vehicle. Shift lowers the vehicle. And further, the rest are the same. So, right now it looks like it doesn't really... Yeah, there it goes. And now it starts to flip over. This is not as bad, because you can still control it. It's just a little more difficult, because now your controls are reversed. If I hit A now, I'm going to turn to the right, and D is to the left. So make sure that if you flip over, which will happen in a hovercraft, I guarantee you, you can still use the hovercraft, it's just a little more difficult to control. Now, as you see, with this hovercraft, I'm going for the top side of this vehicle. And the reason for that is that most people have the guns on top of their vehicle, and that the top of the vehicle is less well armored than the front or the sides. So if you have a vehicle against you, which is very lightly armored on the top, this is where the hovercraft really shines, because that way you can make the most of your agility and your firepower. Anyway, I don't like this thing flipping over, so I'm going to back to the garage to add some weight to the back to make sure it doesn't flip over again. There's two ways you can do this. You can put on some more armored cubes. These things weigh 6 kilograms. If you can check the mass, you'll see that. And you can also do it by adding heavy chassis cubes, which has 15 per block. Now, it depends on whether you have the armored cubes available and whether you want an armored back. Because these add a CPU load of 1 PFLOP, and these add a CPU load of also 1 PFLOP. So, that's not really the difference, but in this case, I want some more armor on it. I add two layers of armor, add a little protection on the back, extend it a little bit to make sure that the rotor blades from the aft are protected, and I hit P again to see if it's going to flip over again. Okay, here we go. I go up, and as you can see, this thing is a little less prone to flipping now. Even in sharp turns, it's not going to flip over. And this is what I meant by what I said earlier about robot hovercraft building not being an exact science, because you can sometimes flip over. It depends on the terrain and the agility of the robot. Now, hovercrafts are very easy to get up mountains, so make sure that if you have a railgun or a long-range plasma gun on this, you get up on a hill and you use your hovering ability to get up on the hill and possibly over the hill to get the drop on people. See, this is something a normal car would not be able to do. You can also use these hovercrafts in combination with railguns. Railguns have a lot of time to charge up, but this way if I'm down here, the people cannot see me. I charge my railgun, I go up, fire my weapons, and go back down again. It's a bit of hopping over, firing your weapons, and getting back down. Now, if you want to, you can add more weapons to the bottom of the ship, and thus making it a little more armored and armed. But keep in mind that anything you do now, you're going to have to test out again, because it's going to alter the weight balance of your ship. In this case, I'm going to go with two more SMGs, and I want these to be able to go downwards. They're on the side, so I can do flybys. And these things have to be able to point down, so it doesn't really matter in this case how you position them, so long as you keep them in a 90 degrees down angle. Put one here, put one on this side. And we could possibly do the same thing on the back of the ship to make th sure that once we've flown past something or if we lose some guns, we're still armed. Okay, this one's wrong side up. I want this to be 90 degrees down, just like the other ones. There you go. Hit P again to practice. And maybe the thing will flip over again because now the back is too heavy. See, now the guns from the sides are also firing, but the thing is getting a little harder to control. And luckily, these guys aren't firing back yet at me, so I can now practice whether the thing is controllable. 
see how well it performs, see if it's a little faster or not. And as you can see, if I'm going down, you can see that the back is tilting a little farther backwards. So that means that the back of the ship is too heavy. To compensate for this, I could take off a, blocks, a few blocks of armor and either leave them without it or add some light blocks. In this case, I'm going with a couple of light blocks to make sure that the back of the ship is a little lighter so it won't tilt back as much. And it's really important that you do this before you act actually enter a battle. If you do it in battle, you're going to really uh, put in your own team at a disadvantage. I've seen this quite a while in tier 1 battles with people trying out hover blades. Now I'm all for it, but make sure that your hovercraft actually hovers and is not some sort of weird balloon which is going all over the place and uncontrollable because that means your team has a lot less guns. Now this thing seems to be operating pretty well at the moment. It's not as fast as a normal car would be, but it has the hover ability. So, let's go back to the garage and test this thing out in battle. Okay, here we are. Time to go to war. If you see these large pillars up here, that's where a robocraft, hovercraft can really get up. A normal car wouldn't be able to do it. But if you use the hover blades or in a later stage the helium blocks, you can get up there quite easily. First I'm going to start by elevating the thing maximum. There's a space bar for that. And I flip over. Okay, this is going to make this match a whole lot interesting. As you can see, by positioning the guns um, optimally in the first place, I can still shoot them. I can still shoot down, even though the robot craft has flipped by now. Now I can see my team's already engaging this contact here. And he's on the other side of the hill. There's also someone out there. Okay, I'm going to descend a bit because I know I'm now taking fire. And cars are always much more heavily armed than hovercrafts. So I do not want to go into a slugging war with this guy. Now pop up. Take some shots at him, hopefully destroy some guns and get back down. I'm going head on with this guy and now you can see that the hovercraft is taking a lot of fire and it's being really hard to control. This is where the real problems arise for the hovercraft, because the moment you lose one or two hover blades, you're going to be basically crashing down to earth and you're going to be something of a car slash hovercraft, you're not going to actually flying, you're not going to actually driving. It's a bit of a mix. Let's see how much this game gave us, because I think it's not going to be too much. See, so yeah, I only did 130 points, earned 318 robot points, but the repair cost is 98, so I didn't really make that much that match. Let's try this again. Now the last match showed you how uh, hovercraft can really not stand a lot of fire, unlike a normal car. A wheel doesn't add as much to the robot limit as a hovercraft does, because of the hover blades. So make sure you either don't take fire, or that you can have redundancy on the robot, so that if you lose one or two hover blades you can still maneuver. In this map I'm going to stay low to the ground initially, get up some hills, and then try to get someone on the side or the top. And I guess I didn't get the balancing right again, because again we're going to flip over. See now I'm not only flying in reverse, but I'm also flying backwards, so let's correct that, put the main guns to the front. And hopefully this thing will flip back at some point. There are some guys, so we can do some damage to them. 
Yep, got the kill. Now our teammates cannot shoot over these hills, these barriers, but we can as a hovercraft. Got the kill. Now I'm getting out of here because I'm taking too much fire. Let me see if I can finish up this guy. I did, and then I got destroyed by someone else. So there you have it. A hovercraft can do a lot of damage if you play it right, if you take people from the side or the top, but it's a very fragile craft, so that's why I personally don't use them very much. I'm much more in favor of ground vehicles because they're much more stable, even if they've taken a lot of damage. You don't need to worry as much about movement, you don't need to worry about flipping over as much if you build it correctly. And while the hovercraft does have several advantages, I still wouldn't really recommend it, not unless you're a more experienced player, if you have a lot of patience building these things and testing them out. Okay, I hope this video, this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thank you for watching.